Hi and welcome to the Sew Along video for the Alexis Cross Body Funnel Neck. We're going to sew this with an overlocker and a plain sewing machine. So thread your overlocker with four threads of colour that match your fabric and set your stitch width to six millimetres which is quarter of an inch. When we stitch this garment we're not cutting any seam allowance off so you're going to be sewing directly on the edge of your fabric. We're only going to use that cutting blade to take off any fraying or previous threads. When you thread up your sewing machine make sure you put a ball needle into it and lengthen your stitch length slightly. When you're ready we're going to get started on the neck piece. Now the design I'm sewing today is the cuff sleeve option and to make it easier to see I'm going to cut my hood lining in a contrast fabric so you can tell the difference between the outside layer and the inside layer. So when you're ready let's get those funnel neck pieces and get started. So we have two pieces to create the neck. We have the outside piece and a lining piece. So for this pattern I'm going to sew my outside piece in the same colour as the body of my garment and the inside piece as the floral. Whichever way you decide to do it is fine but if you're going to sew the version that has eyelets and a drawstring we need to create these on the outside piece only. So decide now which is going to be the outside piece and make sure that you've put the drill holes in. Now because I found it hard to see on this fabric I went ahead and chalked the drill holes here. So you'll have two either side of the centre neck. So what you need to do now is make a decision as to how you want the drawstring to come through. You could stitch an eyelet, you could use an eyelet tool and create two eyelets or you could simply stitch a buttonhole here. Whatever you decide to do, go ahead and do it now on the outside piece and then we'll come back and finish sewing this. So you can see here I've punched two eyelets here and um, what we're going to do now is, making sure you've punched them on the right side of the fabric of course, is place your fabric right sides together and we're going to overlock the short edge. Now take your lining piece and place it right sides together and overlock the short edge as well. So now we need to um, sew these pieces together through the neck edge and the neck edge is the edge that has the eyelets that you've just put it through or if you look at it it's the shorter edge it angles out. So what we need to do is turn one of these pieces inside out or right ways out whichever way you like to put it and we're going to put well I'm going to do it with the lining so here's the lining piece and I'm going to put the lining piece inside the outside funnel so that's right sides together. What I'm going to do first of all is to match the seams so those seams need to be sewn together and I'm just going to anchor them in place with a pin so that's a pin within the seam allowance and then directly opposite you will find another notch and that's the notch in the center of your eyelets so match that to the notch on your lining piece and anchor that into position and you'll also have another notch that actually doesn't mean anything it's just really for reference so I'm going to anchor that into position there as well Okay so when you're ready we're going to overlock that edge together um, 
because it's a funnel neck what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start on this notch position here just so the beginning and end of the overlooking um, even though it's inside just looks a little bit tidier and uh, is going to be a bit smoother so just make sure when you are overlocking that you don't run over your pins with the overlocking needles because you will end up breaking your needles so just make sure you don't stretch this too much when you sew because it's exactly the same piece so it shouldn't need too much easing into place so when you're ready just overlap lock that on the edge So what we're going to do now is move over to our flat machine, our plane sewer, and we're going to sew a channel, a line for our drawstring to sit through. So if you're comfortable um, with threading drawstrings after the channel's been sewn, just go ahead and do what I'm doing now. Um, some people aren't very comfortable about um, putting drawstrings through, um, in which case if you're really careful what you can do is pre-thread well, you place your drawstring through and then stitch the line we're going to stitch now um, while the drawstring's in it. So just make sure that you don't um, stitch through the drawstring. So um, long story short, I'm going to put my drawstring through at the very end and uh, you can choose what you're going to do. So the main thing is we're going to go across to our plain sewer. So the suggested stitch line is marked on the pattern as two and a half centimetres which is an inch from this folded edge to here. So of course you can sew this at whatever width you want but uh, that makes a nice channel for this to sit through. So what I'm going to do is just push that seam so it's sitting all the way on the edge and um, I like to sew this so it's turned like this so the main side is on the inside and the lining's on the outside you of course can sew it any way you like and I'm also going to start sewing it from here so that's just so the beginning and end line of my stitching won't be so visible when the garment's being worn um, you of course can start at the centre back if you prefer completely up to you so I'm just going to put this under my presser foot and use my stitch guide here to help me with that stitch line so take your time and as I said before make sure you have a ball needle in this machine and it's a good idea to lengthen your stitch length. Okay, so put that neckband piece somewhere safe and then take your body pieces. What we're going to do is place our back right side up and then take your right and left front and we're going to put those right sides down matching the side seams. So that's one of the sides is going to sew to that side and the other side is going to sew to that side 
Oh, better get it right the way up. Okay. So we're going to overlock the side seams. So it doesn't matter which side seam you start with. But what I'm going to do is just start at the underarm. Just overlock a short distance. And then I'm going to rearrange my work. You'll find a small notch part way down. And now I'm going to match my hem. And I'm just going to make sure if there's any ease that it's evenly distributed through that seam and continue overlocking. Now the fabric I'm sewing with today is around about a 200 weight uh, merino blend so it's more of a um, winter weight t-shirting blend. Of course you can sew this in um, any sort of medium stretch fabric you like, it won't really make a difference anything from, you could probably even do this in sweatshirt and you might need to go up a size, um, but because this is lighter type fabric, I mean even anything like a hatchy knit or a hassy knit, I'm sorry I don't know how you say that, but what I'm going to say now is because I've sewn from the underarm to the hem, it's a good idea on these fabrics that have some stretch in them is to do the opposite seam run in the same way instead of sewing the other one from the hem to the underarm. So I'm just simply going to flip this over so I can sew the other side from the underarm through to the hemline. so we're going to turn this so the right sides up and what we have to do now is overlock the um, the curve edge of the crossover so we're going to overlock all the hem at once if you have a cover stitcher you can skip this step go straight to a cover stitcher so I'm assuming you don't so we're going to overlock starting at the curve seam here I'm going to overlock down the curve all the way across the back and up to the other side So now we're going to move to the uh, plain sewer and sew the uh, seam allowance, the hem allowance there. So we're going to sew this curved in hem here. Um, you'll see a notch here, so that notch is set at one and a half centimetres, which is nine sixteenths of an inch, and that's simply to show us the turn position. So turn that over so that the wrong sides are together. Now I'm going to um, sew this from the wrong side of my garment. If you want to you can sew this from the right side of your garment and we're going to sew a seam in there at one and a half centimeters right the way through this garment. Now um, if you feel more comfortable use your iron and press the seam into place before you sew. Um, the other thing is if you notice too much roping which are those tunneling effects you get simply reduce the seam allowance down to maybe one centimeter which is near enough to three-eighths of an inch um, that should reduce the tunneling um, because this fabric is light I'm going to go ahead and press the seam allowance in before I stitch it so when you're ready um, stitch that into place
Right, so now we're going to um, sew the shoulder seams. When we wear this garment, we want to make sure that the right side is on top. So what we do is place the garment, so this is the back and this is the right side up of the back. Then put this side down first and this side down second. Okay, so you can see the seam here. And what we want to do now is sandwich these layers together at the shoulders so we can sew them. So, let's start with the shoulder here. You'll have three layers. We have the back here. And then we have the seam that we've just sewn there. And that seam will sit in and there'll be a notch to match that two on the shoulder that you can clearly see here. So the edge of that fold is on that notch position there. When you've got that in the correct position, overlock the seam line here. It's worth your um, while to take your time making sure everything's sitting in the correct place. So now we've done uh, that shoulder seam, we're going to do the other shoulder seam. And now for this shoulder seam here, we have the back layer, then we have one of the front layers, like so, and then we have the, um, the side that we put the seam on, so that seam matches to the notch there and matches to the neck edge there and overlock that seam. So now we're going to sew the sleeves and I'm sewing the cuffed version of the sleeves. Um, so take your cuffs, um, fold one of them right sides together and overlock that edge. Do the same for the other cuff, fold it right sides together. Now turn the cuff back in on itself, so all you do is slide your hand inside that cuff. Now I've done these in the same fabric, so self fabric, but of course you could do these in ribbing if you prefer. I'm doing them in self fabric because there is enough stretch with this fabric. Right, so what you will see is we're going to match the seams here and directly opposite there's a notch and that notch is going to match into the lower area of our sleeve. So put that cuff somewhere safe and just do the same thing with the other cuff. So take one of your sleeves Place it right sides together and we're going to overlock this underarm seam here. And repeat for the other sleeve.
take one of the sleeves you've been working on and you'll notice that there's a notch directly opposite the overlock seam here. Now if you haven't put one in, do it now. It'll make putting in your cuff so much easier. Then take one of the cuffs you made earlier and place it inside this. What we need to do is we're going to match the seams at the underarm. So uh, right sides are all together here. So we're going to match those three layers at the underarm area. And what I'm going to do is just to help myself out a little bit, I'm going to place a pin there. because I want to make sure that they sew exactly on top of each other. And then directly opposite, we have those notches and we want to make sure that all those notches match as well. Now the cuff is smaller than the uh, sleeve area, hem area it's sewing into. So we're going to have to stretch this and distribute the ease as we sew. And because I have this lovely attachment on my overlocker, which makes cuffs very easy to sew, what I'm going to do is just slide this on here. So as you sew, just make sure you distribute that ease evenly and that all three of those layers, the raw edges are even. Just be careful when you do come to sew all those layers together at that um, underarm seam point that um, the seams sit, sorry, the, um, yeah, the seam allowance sits in different ways so there's not too much bulk there to run through. And do let that overlocker cut off um, those excess threads. Okay, so once you've done uh, that cuff, go ahead and repeat that for the other sleeve. So I find the easiest way to sew a set in sleeve is to turn the body of my garment inside out and let's start working on this side and then we place the sleeve inside the garment. First thing we need to do is make sure the underarm seams match. So match those seams and anchor them into place with a pin. Then at the top of the sleeve you'll see a crown notch and that notch needs to match to the shoulder seam there. And if you've picked up the correct sleeve you will also have a back sleeve notch on the sleeve here and that matches to the back notch on the garment there. So that shows us our ease points. So what we need to do now is um, sew the sleeve into place. So I'm going to put my little attachment back on here. Right. And I'm going to start sewing from here. So there's the back notch there and there's the underarm. So I'm going to start overlocking around about here. Make sure you remove your pins as you go. Right, so the first seam we need to make sure matches is, if you're starting sewing from here, is that underarm seam. Now, 
we have to make sure that the next seam that matches is the shoulder seam. So what we need to do is distribute the ease throughout the sleeve. But what happens is there's not a lot of ease from, well there's no ease from the underarm to where the front pitch point would be. So what you can do is actually just overlock up three or four inches because it's not going to make any difference ease wise. Where we need the ease is towards the crown notch here. So go up a little way and then distribute the ease making sure those edges are together and then overlock that. Make sure those notches, that notch matches the shoulder seam and uh, also make sure that the other layers of fabric are out of the way, the other layers of fabric is out of the way. Then distribute the next amount of ease towards the back pitch point which is that single notch. So now we're going to repeat that on the other side. So the last step is to sew in the neckband of our garment. So take your neckband and making sure it's this way so that the right side's out and that our garment is right sides in, in other words right sides together, place this inside the neck area. So directly opposite our eyelets up here, there should be, there it is, some notches. So that's the centre front notches. So those two layers there need to go in and match to the two center front notches on the body of our garment there. So anchor that with a pin. The next notch we've got to worry about is matching this seam here at the back to the double notch at the back neckline. So that seam needs to go directly in the middle of the double notch. Like so. And just take your time because we want to make sure that everything is sitting exactly where we want it to sit. Okay. Then we have a shoulder here. So as you come down on the neckband you will see more notches there. And they need to match to that shoulder seam on one side. Make sure that seam's pushed to the back. And then we will match the shoulder seam to the notches on the other side. There. Right, so now we need to overlock that into place. I'm just going to start right by one of those shoulder notches. Now you're going to have between four and two layers to overlock so you need to make sure that everything is lined up properly.
what I like to do is just sew a couple of stitches just to act like another pair of hands for me and hold everything into place. So we have to make sure that all of our layers, raw edges are even. So there we are all finished. What you do need to do now of course is thread a drawstring through that neckline and give your garment a good press and it's finished. So thanks for joining me for this sew along video and I look forward to you joining me for my next sew along video soon.